This is my tiny apartment. It's one step from my bed to my tiny desk, where I sit to work, bump my knees, and fight with people in the comment section. Another two steps, and I'm at my tiny closet. I got these tiny, slippery handles that makes opening them a pain, but nothing wild happens here. It's just a small closet. I have my tiny meals at this tiny table and chair. And when I'm done, I fold them up, move it to the side, and do push-ups, yoga, or drugs. No, I'm just kidding. I don't do push-ups. On the other side of this wall, I have a tiny kitchen where I cook meals, make coffee, and do drugs. No, I mean vitamins, not drugs. I don't know why I keep making that joke. Behind this door, there is a tiny bathroom and toilet, and it's where I release my tiny meals back into the wild. And this tiny 18 meter squared apartment is where I spend the majority of my life. I make videos, exercise, and work on my big dreams all from this tiny space willingly. I feel like that's important to say, because in this video, I want to make a case for the pros of tiny living and why you might consider it. So about five years ago, I started experimenting with living a more simple life. It went from me decluttering my closet to me gradually moving into my very first intentional but minimally furnished tiny apartment about two years ago. And what I discovered living in that small space was that it's much easier to live a more organized, more rewarding and less stressful life because of the limitations of the space as well as the habits I had to develop living there which led to some outstanding results in my personal life and what I want to share with you guys in this video. The first and most obvious change was in my finances. I didn't realize what housing was actually costing me. Not just higher rent, but the way I saw opportunity in general. An emergency fund was something I expected to take forever to save. And I wouldn't take any risks because I had to maintain or improve my lifestyle. And even though I hated my job at times, I would never consider leaving because I'd at least need to find something that paid the same to maintain my quality of life. I also had some other bad habits around spending I didn't recognize until I downsized. I was always unconsciously browsing for something that could look good in my apartment. Living at my means with housing was costing me the risk I could take in my youth, my financial freedom, and my personal power until I realized I needed them all back. A major motivator for me to move into this tiny apartment was to reduce the hours I worked at my full-time job so I could continue pursuing my goal of creating a successful YouTube channel and at the same time be free from financial worry. The lower rent allows me to live in a better area and save an emergency fund quickly and the small size limits me from spending on furnishing, shopping and constantly thinking about what I can buy to fill space. The apartment is so small that almost anything I bring in makes it feel cramped quickly and that makes shopping less desirable. My cooking habit changing was something that surprised me. I'm not a good cook, but occasionally I'd throw on my chef hat and try to make something for my friends to try. But with much smaller prep space, I don't really want to do that anymore, saving me money and perhaps saving lives. It's popcorn infused with and skittles like gummy to really bring out the saltiness of the popcorn. I call it skibbity pop. A tiny apartment creates the conditions for a lot of positive saving habits without the feeling of sacrifice. And whether we like to admit it or not, financial stability is what gives us the freedom to make decisions that aren't solely for the money. And it's a lot easier to tell your boss to shove a pocky stick up his ass if you can cover three months of salary in just one paycheck. Another thing I realized living in this micro apartment is that I don't get distracted as often or procrastinate as much as I did before. I knew I was never a lazy person, but I've always been easy to distract. I'm that friend that reads the message, promises myself that I'll get back to you in a little, then doesn't remember to check until your next birthday. And I apologize on behalf of all of us. We're really just assholes. We're assholes, of course. But also we're highly functional goldfish. 
and the way my brain works it's constantly looking for some type of stimulation and if something isn't directly in front of me it's as if it doesn't exist. If I start cleaning as a distraction I'll clean until I'm physically exhausted or there's nothing left to clean. If I'm working on something important and my attention drips it's incredibly challenging to refocus myself to a productive mental space. Or put another way, I'm highly sensitive to the things that are in my immediate awareness. At my lowest point, I'd get home from work, walk past my TV room and grab my game console, sit my butt on this black leather couch I had and play games until it stuck to that couch, which is both disgusting and also not the type of person that I wanted to be. The problem was that I had a dedicated space to unwind that had no reminders of what I wanted to be as well as physical barriers separating me from the space that I worked, meaning that I was in a room where I would constantly be getting dopamine and it also had a barrier stopping me from getting to where I wanted to work. For a lot of people, this may seem like it's not really that big of an issue, but if you're in an environment and you have no reminders of what you're trying to do, you're less likely to do the thing. However, in a micro apartment, everything is compressed into one room. The place you rest, entertain yourself, and work are all always within your awareness, which makes it difficult to ignore your goals. There's no escaping my goal of being a YouTuber or the work I have to do to achieve that. When I come home, I can see my desk. When I wake up, I see my desk. When I leave the toilet, I see my desk. For some people, it might feel like they can't take a shit in peace, but for me, it means I got my shit together. The only time I don't see my desk is when I actively set out to rest, which is great because it makes it easy to work and easy to rest. I intentionally designed my apartment to nudge me toward my goals, but that's the point I'm getting at. A smaller space is easier to control. It forces us to make decisions about how we'd like to live and be in this space. And because we're products of our environment, it makes it much easier to control ourselves if we're conscious about the things we bring into it. Living small does come with some challenges many people aren't ready to face though. One of those is being forced to confront your own emotions and problems much more often than you'd otherwise do. It's become so easy to distract ourselves now because everything moves, clicks, or dances. And the more of these things we have in our homes, the more of our time, the only time we have to resolve our problems that we give away to distraction. What's worse is that it doesn't even help the problem. It just puts it away where it can continue to grow and shrinks the time we can spend productively resolving it. I know for myself, I could tell exactly how big a problem was in my life by how mindless the TV I was consuming became and how dirty my room was. One of the things that truly inspired me to try small housing was the mental clarity people spoke about. It forces you to be more orderly, thought out, and decisive. I had to find spaces to dedicate to things and create rules to keep my space clean, and those rules spilled over into the way I conduct myself in daily life. Cleaning my space forced me to confront why I would let my space get into disarray to begin with. The clutter I'd brought in would force me to wonder why I let it gather. And the idea of systems, rules, and confronting issues head on has improved my ability to serve myself as well as my company as an employee and given me tools to better myself going forward. And if you'd like to learn some simple ways to make your life more effortless, click on this video here where I talk about five rules I use to simplify my life. As always, thank you for watching.